It's been in the news cycles for more than a year now. Prostitutes, assault charges, drunk driving, intruders gaining access to the White House. The Secret Service seems to have run amok. Do you think our president and candidates are safe, Colin? Uh, in, a sh in short, no, probably yeah. not. There you go. Um, and I think, you know, the Secret Service, much like a lot of these other agencies, has a basic cultural problem. And I think that um, that what that what it, and we'll tie into that a little bit more. But what that entails is that a lot of the agents have I, w I don't want to call it a god complex, but they certainly have a, a chip on their shoulder, and they have this attitude that they can do whatever they want and are able to get away with it because they're in a position that they're in. Uh, so I think from the standpoint to answer your question, no, our president and our candidates are not very safe, and that's has been borne out by the fact that we've had. You know, two Secret Service agents that may or may not have been intoxicated hit a barricade outside the White House. We've had multiple folks jump over the fence, and one actually was able to get almost into the Oval Office, which, regardless who happens to be sitting in the White House, just should not happen uh, on a lot of levels. But so almost only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades the last time I checked. <laughs> So that, that's the first thing. Secondly, are you jealous, Colin? I think you want a job there. I think that's, you want to jump in on some of the extracurricular activities. Well, there and, are a lot of perks, yeah. apparently. And thirdly, <laughs> and thirdly what, does all of that, what does all of that have to do with safety? Yes, I, I agree with you. I think the Secret Service um, probably at some level, and maybe rightfully so at some level, has a chip on their shoulder. They are the most, theoretically, the most elite fighters, protectors in the entire world, period. Um, you know, they, they, what do they call their rifles? Jars? Just another rifle, right? I mean, it's, it's amazing what these people are tasked with doing. So I, I don't want to say that the, the, the president or the candidates or those that would get Secret Service protection are not safe. I think there's some cleanup that needs to be done. I think sunlight is the best disinfectant. But I think in the scope of what they do, what we've seen from that organization in terms of problem is less than a gnat on a bull's rear end. So what you're saying basically is that the number of, the amount of time that we've been having, been realizing the scandals or the, or the we mishaps or whatever you come, happens to coincide with a 24-hour news cycle and they don't have enough to talk about. So we're hearing about a lot more things than we used You're to. You're absolutely well, right. We're we are. taking people who are supposed to be the most testosterone-laden people on the planet and putting them in a position where they're supposed to be, um, you know, protect, protecting the leader of the free world. Well, yeah, those guys are probably going to have extracurricular they activities. They are human, yeah. too. But here's, they are. here's the issue, though, and I'm going to disagree with you. Um, what they do in their own personal time, within reason should be beyond is, is not really up to debate so the issue is that these occurrences and let's leave the drunk driving piece because those guys were off duty but certainly the, the part with the with the prostitutes in Colombia those guys were on a detail so regardless what they're doing in their own personal time that's one thing but any professional should be able to separate that from being on on task when they're on a detail and that should be their focus and that's I think where the criticism now I do think you bring up a very valid point which is that these issues constantly get blown out of proportion by the media right. because they want ratings you know we, we are suffering by having a media that's driven entirely by ratings they don't really care about the news they care about what it is that's going to drive the very short attention span of their viewing public uh, to watch them as opposed to somebody else right. well and I, I think this has been going on for years. We just haven't heard about it. Absolutely. And that, that leads exactly to where, where you two were talking about, that the 24-7 news cycles and what have you, and social media. This has been happening for years. You know, I was in the military a while ago, and uh, these things happen because they are humans. However, right. uh, when they're on a detail, as you mentioned, that, that's something else. But I guess what bothers me is they're, le they're crying, so they claim, for leadership. The, 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 the rank and file, the boots on the ground are crying for leadership. Uh, morale is low. And so they're executing their, their, their discomfort by, doing, by being lax, if, if that's the right word. And so they talk about shakeups. Uh, they're lacking for leadership. So where does leadership begin? Right. Gee. Yeah, but, but uh, let, yeah. Me, let, me, let me go back to the detail thing. And I, I agree theoretically with what you said. If you're on duty, you have a different set of standards. But if you're on a detail, are you on duty 24 hours a day, seven days a week, if that detail is, is longer term? That particular thing happened before any of the 
the um, principles, if you will, the, the protectees, were in country, as I understand it. Well, well that's the same as the, the issue. Um, a couple agents were caught. Caught. I'm assuming that meant somebody with a cell phone. That's which is a whole other issue. Everybody now has a cell phone, has a camera and a, and a movie camera, so you're going to get caught much more often. People who do things now that don't think they're going to get caught. They're going to are, are just not You're paying on attention. film everywhere. Exactly. Well, everywhere. And the reality is, you know, look at it from a military standpoint. If you're, if you're on a mission and you're sent ahead as the, the forward detail, so you're there in order to prepare for the rest of your, your unit to arrive, that's not the time to be partying or doing anything else. And I was in the military as well, and I certainly was no angel. But when it came to mission, when it came to being on duty, that you separate that from whatever drinking or anything else that exactly. you may do off duty. And, and, and that's, that's the point that I'm trying and, to make. And I, I take the same thing. They were, on de they were there for a purpose. That was their job. And their job happens to run 24-7. Right. And, uh, they and how much it is, is really the penalty we're paying for the society that we're creating that, you know, we don't, we don't authority means nothing anymore. I think you know, very so, much. So, I mean, obviously. how much of it is you're sitting there thinking, yeah, the president's coming tomorrow, but he's not here tonight, so I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. You know, that's what happened in the Netherlands, as an example, earlier this year. They were, two agents were drinking, and it was, again, like you were saying, the night before the principals come into the country. You know, and it's just, eh, whatever, you know, it's because we, we don't care about anything much anymore. But I guess it goes back to where I, I it, nothing happens. You know, they talk about a shakeup in the leadership. Out of the eight principals in the Homeland Security, uh, four are being reassigned, two get to retire, and the remaining, they're, they're retaining two of them in place. How, what kind of punishment is that? Well, you I know, think what, you're confusing shake-up with consequences. <laughs> oh, yeah, but I guess so. I yeah, thought of it exactly. that way. Gee, Here's where I think the issue of me, right? lies is the fact that, you know, when, whenever they have one of these shake-ups and they have a shake-up in leadership, they're always bringing somebody from inside. Now, the Secret Service has a very particular skill set, right? So there aren't a whole lot of agencies where you could pluck somebody right, right. who has a lot of skill, Good put point. them in there, and they would understand the way that the agency functions. By the same token, we have the FBI, which isn't plagued by the same type of issues. Um, and we have several that we other about. that we know about. Uh, you know, whatever Edgar Hoover may have been doing under his desk is beyond beyond discussion. Uh, but not till now, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Only on the flip side. Or what he may have been wearing, probably more. There accurately. you go. That's uh, but <clears throat> still, I you know, to me. The, there's, there's two things. There's tactical leadership and then there's strategic leadership. And in order to make these changes, you can bring somebody who's not necessarily an expert at protection, who can look at the managerial aspects of things and make sure the policies are being enforced, make sure the procedures are being enforced and all those things without necessarily being a tactical leader. But, you know, there are also people would make the same comment about the military, how we've, we now are putting more managers in uh, national security positions per se versus people who are actually would know what you do when you put boots on the ground and and you know I I have a I'm not a big fan of bringing in a manager to take over a position that's not really a manager's position but have it isn't the other issue here that these issues get trumped up for political reasons Absolutely. I mean let's face it if the same if the same set of circumstances if you look at the news coverage on these Secret Service things I'll guarantee you MSNBC covered it two minutes Fox covered it two hours, mm -hmm. right? If George W. Bush would still be in the office, Fox would have covered it two minutes, yeah. and MSNBC <laughs> would have covered it two hours. You know, we all want to be on the right side of this of this issue, but we, we only are on the right side of it if it's polit politically beneficial to be there, in my opinion. And really, politics is run, runs everything right now. It does. I, mean, it's there, not I don't think any decisions are made at any level in a news organization or uh, you know, a, a, an agency that aren't political in Because nature. it's well, all about the ratings in the news organizations. They live and die on those ratings. And unfortunately, it's a problem we've created by, for ourselves by mm -hmm. becoming so hyper-polarized. Nobody can have a say without having somebody jump on them. That's right. And we, we can't have a conversation without standing in our respective corners throwing insults at one another. And that's, that's, that's a much bigger problem well, and, and I don't a think, much more I don't think we're hyper-polarized. <laughs> I think that the, the, the people that are hyper-polarized are the ones that are stepping up to the mic and talking. I think we have too many people that just ignore the political process and don't understand it and don't want to understand it. But that's, I know we're running out of time, but anyway, that's my point. Stay and tuned because in three minutes we'll be right back to talk about centralized planning, zoning, and project implementation throughout our county. We'll be right back. <laughs> 